podcast about stuff and things i'm joined as always by my co-hosts my name is chris i am jazz signals on the internet that's gary he is binary gary on the internet and this is allison who is allison plus on the internet and today is an exciting day today is an exciting day because it is if you're Catholic, All Saints Day. <laughs> oh. But of course. today is also the first day of the playoffs for my uh, home Major League Soccer team. They're probably going to lose, but we won't know until next week when this airs, and I'll either be very sad at that point or very happy at that point. But they'll probably get knocked oh. out by next week, too. If they do win. Yes, Gary, you have something? The uh, health exchange opened this morning at midnight. So if you're like one of those iPhone people that get up at midnight to be the first in line, congratulations on your new health insurance plan. (laughs) (laughs) Today is also exciting because uh, when this airs, it will be the the Friday after the midterm elections. Oh. Oh. But we don't know how that's going to turn out, so we're either going to be we film two episodes today. We're either going to be hopeful or we're going to be miserable. Maybe we should. Maybe we should. I don't know if I can record two episodes today. A, a sad one for for. I mean, it could be the same topic. We won't know anything about it after the show's over. <laughs> I already, be, I already voted. I, I already yeah. voted too. I did not. I want the mayhem of Tuesday. Oh. I'm taking an infant in my arms. As soon as the polls open at 7 a.m., we're going to tromp down there, cast our votes. Well, Trump down there, huh? <laughs> I guess she'll have to fill out provisional ballots since she's not 18. But, yeah. <laughs> but you need her there for moral support. Yeah, we, we tend to always take the kids. That's actually seems like a really good thing to do. Show you yeah, just, civic duty. Yeah, yeah. And it's generally with the kids, it's never really a conversation about, well, it's not really a conversation about the down ballot, <laughs> uh, but, but it's more of a conversation about like, why do people vote different ways and um, recognizing that even though we are convinced 50% of people voting are morons, they probably aren't all morons. That <laughs> their realization of reality is different than ours and why. It's, we have to do this every two years? God, it sucks. <laughs> but it shows the process. I don't know. I get really like the other... I voted absentee but then I also there was a city election so I voted in that as well and like I get nerdily excited because once I was finally allowed to vote I was like I'm like standing in line I'm like super I don't know I just get I'm like in the basement of a church I'm just I don't know I just Utah uh, a couple years ago um, switched to uh, primarily mail-in ballots as their primary form. Of, I mean, they still have polls open on on election day, but they send every everyone gets a mail-in ballot, yeah. um, which I like uh, because I don't like leaving the house. Yeah. Uh, but in past elections, I have had the problem where, like, with mail-in ballots, you get it like a month early. And then you're sitting on it because you're waiting for like more information and news about the issues. And you sit on it to the point where, oh shit, election day just came and went. Um, and that's happened a couple of times, not for major election, just for the midterms. But, um, but this year we have uh, three, count them, three ballot initiatives that were, uh, that's, which is unprecedented in, um, in Utah, which almost never gets ballot as like organization, like voter, like citizen initiated ballot initiatives, almost never get that stuff. We get lots of constitutional amendments, <laughs> but not ballot, no, not voter uh, initiatives. So um, that's cool. Um, and and yeah, so we we mailed ours in a couple of weeks ago, uh, so as to not get screwed 
and forget and yeah. not be able to vote on on gerrymandering and uh, medical marijuana. So I don't mail mine in because I have uh, twice had my mailed in ballot say that my signature doesn't match the signature on file. So yes, yeah, yeah that's been a topic of a previous episode, and I still find that amusing. I think yeah. I I think it's just further proof that you may or may not be a spy or in the witness protection program. I mean, yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> no, but this, I mean, this year, like, so we were supposed to get, um, like, a voter card or, or whatnot, and we've lived in the same place for, like, eight or nine years. We've gotten voter cards here before. It's been fine, and we, nobody did. My upstairs neighbor did, but we didn't, and my partner promptly put on the old tinfoil hat and she cried, voter suppression! <laughs> but you just show up with your ID and then they fix it. But it's still very weird that we- I it. think if you do that in the States, you get arrested. If you yell voter suppression or if you- No, if you show up with your ID, but not the card, I think you get arrested. Oh. No, luckily- Only if you're brown. Yeah, I'm like, I, with, our, with our privilege, we showed up and stood in line and all, all was for naught. And we voted. Oh, Allison, sure, here's a ballot. He's yeah. like, yeah, oh, Allison, over from, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, we know you. You've lived in this neighborhood for 10 years, it's fine. <laughs> Did we not send you a card? Our, our mistake. <laughs> our mistake, next time, next time. Not just the because Canadians are so much nicer. The election did not turn out how I wanted it to. It's okay. Mm. That's okay. Do you all do that. like a, control center like an election night with like laptops and tv turned on or uh, I, think the, I i usually only do that uh for presidential elections but this year i might do it for for the midterms yeah 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 it's it's become so much easier like um the new york times like real time api of returns is pretty good years ago uh this had to be it was a presidential election so 2000 and four maybe um actually worked um like volunteered with a guy like reading returns from counties in florida and updating counties so that he could adjust his projections that were ultimately being fed to someone elsewhere but that was fun <laughs> refreshing csv files and dropping an excel to parse them out to figure out like which counties had had added returns because you couldn't feed that stuff back in those days it was just like you know we didn't look at elections in the same way as a county by county thing. In the States, I've only ever voted absentee. So I think that's why I get so excited about voting in person here. Because, and, and because it's, it's so like, it feels so like, I'm like, oh, there's like paper. And, and then they put this weird cardboard thing over it. Like that's secrecy. And then they feed it <laughs> to the machine and like, I don't know. It's yeah, it does feel like you do feel empowered when you leave from voting. Yeah. You know, regardless of the outcome, there's something cool about doing that that Tuesday and knowing like tonight, my vote will impact or in most cases not have any impact at all. But, you know, I counted. Result. I'm a number. I'm a cog in this machine. <laughs> I, um, yeah, I am a cog in this machine. <laughs> I think I've only voted in person a couple times. I've mostly voted absentee. And I we, voted, we, in, I voted in the, we should have this conversation last week so people would be like motivated to get out and vote. Yeah. yeah. I did vote. Is this, are we motivating people to get out and vote though? No, not really. Um, I this, voted, is, this is the best I got. I voted in, in, in the Democratic primary uh, the last uh, presidential cycle so I could put my stamp on uh, Hillary, I believe. Getting but, up and out. Was the primary close in your state or no? No. I mean, Democratic, it was, it, I mean, it, yeah, it, probably closer. I don't know when Utah votes in the grand scheme of nominations. So I'm not sure if you're like a player in the nominee or if it's more symbolic at that point. Yeah, it, it's not really. There, there's not, it's such a red <laughs> it state. Be Iowa, it's such a red state that my vote means nothing. <laughs> Local elections, uh, my vote probably means something, but but presidential, we're going to vote the Republican <laughs> no matter what, except oh. except uh, 2016 because the the LDS Church was so mad at Trump 
that they uh, endorsed a third party candidate uh, for a while, and then they retracted it a week before the election. So Trump still won in our state, but we had this random third party dude get 30% of the vote or something. Like, What party was that third party dude in? He is independent, I think. Mm. Yeah. But like, not Hillary. No way, Hillary. But, but still. But this guy. Yeah. This, this other guy. Yeah. But it was weirdly, weirdly closer uh, in Utah for the presidential race than, than it was expected because, because the church just pulls so much weight. Yeah. There's a subreddit on people that have left the church. The I bet there is. <laughs> Mormon specifically, yeah. It's fascinating. Fascinating. There are um, a great many things they do that when you learn about them, you're like, really? Like, I, uh, like uh, one thing. Mitt Romney is magic underwear. Well, all Mormons have magic underwear. I didn't know that. that that's a I thing. want magic underwear. Yeah, they, they, they have special garments. Yeah. Um, that they are required to wear if they want to remain in good standing with the church. Um, so yeah. because of that, um, this thing, I didn't... Are I there didn't... Mormon-specific laundromats then? In the interest of decency? Keeping this, like, holy underwear unholy? Well, it's not just That's one pair. One. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, one thing I didn't realize when I moved yeah, uh, was... Was you, you see a lot of in, in Utah, you see a lot of women wearing um, basically like t shirts underneath tank tops and like spaghetti strap things. And I didn't realize so that, and I just thought that was a weird Utah thing. The reason why that is that is is because they're wearing their garments. And and if you were if you were a Mormon woman or girl and you were not wearing something underneath your spaghetti strap or tank top or whatever, then you would be showing that you're not wearing your garment and therefore not a member in good standing of the church. So it's like you would be outing yourself essentially or showing that you're a, a, a bad member of the church and, and potentially get kicked out. Um, lose your, they, they have, they actually have actual like um, cards, I guess that, that say this person is allowed to go into the, the temple. Um, hmm. And and yeah, you would lo you'd lose your card if if you expose those shoulders. Shut up! I have a sleeping baby. <laughs> and you don't want to lose that card. Yeah, I mean it, it matters particularly if uh, like if you're a student at BYU, if you don't have your card, you get booted. That's true. Yeah. BYU. yeah. Um, but the other thing, someone. what is going other, on today? The other thing uh, that that I was going to talk about was they do these really weirdly invasive uh, interviews where they uh, ask. Uh, they, I I don't know. I think it's before you get married, and when you're asking your your ward bishop uh, if for permission essentially to get married. Um, and they do this weird, invasive, personal interview where they talk about all of the times you've had any sort of sexual encounters or sexual thoughts or whatever. And they get particularly deep into it for women, like far more than the male uh, counterparts. And they go like, like everything and it's really horribly uh, – uh, invasive and people have spoken out about it and they still do it. They still do it. Um, they've, they've sort of, I guess maybe, um, started shying a little bit away from it because people have been making a big stink about it in the last couple of years, but, but it's, it's still a thing that, that happens. So like, imagine going into like going into the church and like, yeah, we're, we want to get married. And, and like the dude's like, well, how many times have you had sex? And and in what times and and where and in what positions and did you I mean like and like this is your this is your minister this is your your pastor this is your your religious guidance person and and like I don't want to tell you that no <laughs> it's not your business There's no bearing on the situation here have you ever had sex with anyone else besides your your partner I don't know oh those that yeah those people have so much. <laughs> it's like it's like the the sample that's used at the beginning of uh, the Nine Inch Nails cover of Get Down Make Love, like 
what did you do? How did you do it? What did you say? What word did you speak? That's what I want to know. Like, and that's exactly the comparison that they want yes. to be made. Yes. <laughs> They're like, you know what this is like. <laughs> <laughs> My friend Resner has a really good point. <laughs> we should integrate this into our <clears throat> squeaky door. Our marriage workflow. Oh, marriage workflow. Marriage has a workflow, and that's, I don't know, partnership has a workflow. And now Gary's gone. And now Gary's gone, so we can talk about him behind his back. Gary. What a guy. <laughs> Got nothing. Today is also uh, the week before my birthday. It is. Yeah. So will next week One be One week, exactly. Uh, so when we air this show next week, it will be the day after my birthday. Woo! The birthday extravaganza will have been completed. Yes. Yes. My, my big plans for, and it's, it's a big one. It's, I, I mean, people t are telling me it's a big one. So I'm turning 40. Ooh. So they, they, there's a zero in there. So. Yeah, there's a zero in there. It must be big. So <laughs> my big plans for, for the big 4-0, I, I want to go bowling. Nice. It's my big plan. Are you a good bowler? Uh, I I'm an average bowler. I think I'd be better if I bowled more. Um, okay. I use, I actually did take lessons for a time when I was a kid. So I, I kind of know what I'm supposed to do, but I don't like, I don't bowl well, like dry. Like I need, I would need, I need several games. I need practice. I need to be doing it on a regular. I'm now remembering that we have technically bowled together. <laughs> That's right. We have. That's right. We did. We did bowling at. at yeah. uh, I am a poor bowl bowler, but it's one of the things that I'm bad at that I still enjoy. <laughs> I um. Didn't you break draws. a nail when we were bowling? I believe I did. Yeah. Not shocking. <laughs> I should also have my internal internet. microphone on my laptop turned on and not the microphone on my headphones. So when I walked away, I was trying to converse with you. <laughs> nope. And I was like, how did they decide, like, without com communication to, like, totally ignore me? <laughs> so I had, like, this existential crisis while I was talking about. <laughs> like, maybe I, maybe I've imagined all this. <laughs> if you're you're walking this in a podcast. Yeah. Yeah. And then I got in and I checked the microphone and it makes so much more sense now. Yeah. Occam's razor and whatnot. Is that the topic a, today? A group decision to just ignore you for the rest of the episode. It is all through uh, eye contact. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't sure, like, if you had, like, hand signals for it or something. Like, <laughs> just cut it out. <laughs> I was a little panicked. And then I was thinking, well, if it is the microphone, at least it didn't pick up the squeaky door so much today. <laughs> so, you just decided that, on both accounts. Yeah, we decided you table flipped and you were just over it because... I hadn't brought up the topic yet or something. But we're going to now. Right. Yes, totally. We're totally going to bring up the topic now. Uh, <laughs> the topic is nixtamalization. Excuse what me? What is it? Nixtamalization. Nixtamalization. Nixtamalizing, as it were. Yeah, exactly. As it were. No, I can see, I can see the wheels working. <laughs> Well, Nix, Nix obviously means nothing. So nixtamalization would mean would mean the nothingization. Wow, that squeaky door. I'm gonna we're gonna fly to Florida and oil that door. Yeah, we're gonna put some WD forty on that door. <laughs> I'm still hundred percent convinced that the microphone just is much more receptive in that frequency range than my ears are. Because it's it's so like that not door is, whew, that's rough. Yeah. But no one uh, can sneak into your house, so that's good. Nixtamalization no anyway. is, is somebody would wake up and cry or bark or meow. Is knowing a I shuffle it up if it's a kid or an animal. A thing. So if I'm nixtamalizing this uh, spreadsheet, I would be emptying the spreadsheet. Oh. Is it is it a form of compression? Is no. it nixtamalize the ex extraneous data? <laughs> emptying a spreadsheet, clearly. You, you could, I suppose, I suppose you could nixtamalize the extraneous data. Yes. So to be clear, if you had, though, if you had an is, algorithm to, to, to right? identify what the extraneous data was, then you could nixtamalize the extraneous data. I feel like this is like a um, profession. Nixtamalization is a profession. Yeah. Like nixtamalization. Like who's our nixtamalization list? 
<laughs> a member of the Society of Nixtamalization. An <laughs> amateur Nixtamalist. Yeah, the other thing I'm thinking is, is it's, it's sort of like a nihilist. Because <laughs> they believe in nothing. But like, but maybe like a halfway point where they're just yeah. like, well, like. They're, no, they're more nihilist. It's the process of they're, becoming a nihilist, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're more nihilist. The first thing nihilist. you do is shed your religious underpants. <laughs> religious <laughs> underpants. Step two is you taunt your priest with made up crazy sex escapade stories. <laughs> Step three, you eat Arby's. <laughs> why is why is the Arby's the step three? Because they've got the meats. Uh, no, it's the Arby's Twitter account. No. Oh. It's fantastic. That's a good it's one. Like, <laughs> it's like two for two dollar recipe sandwiches. Not that it matters. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it's like there's like thousands of, of tweets like that. It's pretty good. I don't follow it, but I have a friend that does. So I'm not like overloaded on it. He just weeds out the good ones and when he retweets them, I always laugh and then cry. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's effective it's effective i appreciate following people who do who do the weeding and the best of cultivating for me from those accounts oh yeah this guy's crazy um i don't actually know him in real life um, <laughs> but i feel like i know him in real life because we've interacted quite a bit on twitter uh, i don't even actually know what state he lives in we are fans of the same I, football I still love football. phrases like that though because technically you don't know me in real life <laughs> i know you in real life oh yeah. shit you're right <laughs> <laughs> for some people i exist in a real life way and some people i don't that's this really is a downer of an episode today y'all <laughs> i mean Wait, it's, that not a downer, it's not downer yet it'll be downer next week when we're all depressed we start with voting we roll into whether i exist or not and then we roll into like the existence of everyone on the show i exist in a very real sure, way you would say that i would too <laughs> that will be my next tweet i exist in a very real way <laughs> shout into the void <laughs> i can i can concur that that allison does exist however i might not exist because you've never met me in person either <laughs> i do know that you're 40 years old next thursday thank you <laughs> thanks for reminding me not that it matters not that it matters <laughs> it's it's funny that the zero the zero is the thing that it's like it's a big birthday and it's just like well 39 could have been a big birthday yeah, like really. <laughs> yeah i mean the 40th birthday is just celebrating the 40 years i've already been here this is not like a new thing today it's a, like no this is actually my 41st year oh it's but bowling it's, you've yeah. completed 40 laps around the sun that's, that's true in the cosmic scheme of that is something that's 40 something. laps around the sun not okay. that it matters <laughs> <laughs> not that it matters <laughs> yeah. You nixed him a list. <laughs> it's nixed to Gary. <laughs> so we, um, we, let's talk about Halloween for a minute. Since today. Okay, let's talk about it. Great. I love Halloween, not for costumes or candy. Those things are great. I love Halloween, uh, and I'm also an introvert, so I hate like the like people part of Halloween. But I love <laughs> observing, um, like as I walk around the neighborhood with the kids, like we trick or treat in our neighborhood. Um, the past few years. Previously, we'd go and trick-or-treat in my parents' neighborhood because they want to see the kids in costume. Easy for us to go there, blah, blah, blah. Um, but That's now we trick-or-treat in our neighborhood. Um, and I love seeing, like, the differences um, in, in, like, people's approach to Halloween and the kinds of people and groups and the way they, like, flock together and um, decide to go to houses or whatnot and, you know, like, well, these people just have to bowl outside. They're very trust trusting, you know, or people have to bowl outside sitting on top of a chair. I wonder if that chair will be there tomorrow. This is more about me than them or the people. <laughs> that are but um, I just, I find that all fascinating. Like I really, I'm fighting a cold. So after two streets, I'd had enough of it, but we still had two more to go. So at that point, I was kind of like, well, these people all suck. Let's go to bed. Um, yeah, really fascinating. We put out a basket of candy and it was like not, it wasn't crappy stuff. I mean, it was like Smarties and Tootsie Rolls. So it was like, it wasn't the stuff you don't want, but it was like the stuff you eat last, obviously. <laughs> uh, it was, half of it was there. Like when I went to take the dog out last night, the basket was only half empty. Well, or okay. was it half full? <laughs> no, it was half empty. 
<laughs> Maybe it was half full. In this case, that would be the most pessimistic approach. Like it's half full. I don't want any of this shit. <laughs> That's true. So, so I have a half a basket of Smarties. Like, and to be clear, American Smarties. Okay. Not the Smarties. I was um, just about to clarify because I was just like, like I'll take them all. Yeah, this is very confusing. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what else is in there. There's like gumdrops, which are probably T or C. Um, I don't know what else is in there. Only Smarties and Tootsie Rolls stand out to me. Tootsie Rolls are great. Are, are they bottom of the barrel for most people? Oh. I think they're tier B. Uh, there's tier A, like which are candy bars, right? And like tier, I don't know, 1,000 is like the full candy bar, but that's mythical. So like tier A is like the mini candy bars, the right? The kids got stuff. full bags of Skittles last night. Wow. Like more yeah. than one too. People are really ramping up. Yeah. I was like, what is this? Like, <laughs> like my son was eating a bag of Skittles. I'm like, you got a bag of Skittles? Like, and then he pulls out another one and he says, Lila got two too. I'm like, what? Actually, no, he said Lila got three, I think. Dude, oh, um, I know. Wow. Do you see the phenomenon where people make like little like bags, like plastic bags containing like equal amounts of candy so they can hand each kid like, here's four pieces of candy. That's I'm not, you can't do that because you can put drugs in that. Oh, Why would like, anyone give away like their drugs? Loose candy? Wait, that's, what's happening? That's, no, it's that's still wrapped always candy. what it's I say. A decorative bag. Oh, wrapped candy. If I had just in a, a larger decorative bag. Yeah, with like an oh, orange no. or black like twist tie. Well, so, no, I have seen that. I have seen that, but no, nobody was giving those away last night. That's I'm really going to be popular. the person that like is giving away pennies and dental floss or something. Well, I'm not I pennies. Get, I used to get pennies. We don't have them anymore, but yeah, that would have been a good idea actually to give away pennies now that nobody uses them yeah <laughs> what a jerk move <laughs> yeah we yeah, actually the actually the kids were the my my daughter was complaining because she didn't get anything that wasn't candy last last night um huh. because usually there's at least something that's like a pencil or you know like some <laughs> some random other thing but yeah they that. just got candy yeah damn just candy. I shucks we we did two trick or trunks or trunk or treats or whatever they're trunk called or, yeah and trick or treating last night so mm. kind of over we handed out like pencils at one of the trick or trunks do Halloween you pencils. do you, what do you do with all the candy do you actually do the kids actually eat all the candy or do you get to a certain point and like okay oh, we're gonna so cut off and and we're, we're just so weird you're so weird okay because i'm weird too so, so i want to hear how you're weird about this so we have these buckets the kids can keep special treats in, which are candy or other like, you know, wrapped cookies or whatever, right? Um, and generally like they can have one piece after dinner. So Halloween lasts until like Easter and then they get a crap ton <laughs> more and that carries them over to, to Halloween. So like these buckets have been ongoing, I mean, for years. And like when it gets like really full and you can't fit more in there, you go, well, let's dump some of the crap you're not gonna eat. And then it's back to normal. And then it gets, like last night it got replenished and they're going to dump some stuff today or we're going to put it in a bag and drop it off somewhere else and someone else, you know, like, what am I going to do with a basket full of Smarties for God's sakes? Actually, I'm going to get some Smarties right now. <laughs> what am I going so, to do? Well, maybe you're going to eat them. So, so we started doing several years ago, uh, visits from the great pumpkin huh. and the great pumpkin is related to the tooth fairy. So the great pumpkin takes all of your, so you're saying it's made up. no, <laughs> the great pumpkin it's a type of fairy is what i'm saying <laughs> it's a pumpkin upset just go with me uh the great pumpkin comes and visits and it takes all the candy that you're done with like not the candy you've eaten but the candy that like okay we're not going to eat the rest of this candy mm -hmm. and the great pumpkin will take that candy and in exchange because the great pumpkin really likes candy and eats all the candy so the great pumpkin takes all the candy and gives you some sort of toy or prize or lego set or something so, so that, that's, that's how we get around like, okay, you've had way too much freaking candy and there's still a big old bag full. Yeah. Um, I like this. Great pumpkin. It makes me wish I had something to trade. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't have, I have candy. <laughs> that's the problem here. How are we down to the countdown already? We've been talking, we've been talking about Halloween and not about Nick's civilization. Which well, is I'm exactly, maybe, maybe that's exactly what Nick's civilization is. is Talking about Halloween? No, yeah, avoiding the topic. Avoiding the topic. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we might, we've been nixtamalizing this entire time. <laughs> is that really what it is? No, I wish it oh. was. <laughs> what is it? 
So it's uh, the process, okay, so for corn tortillas specifically, which is why this is relevant, because I think, <laughs> I, I, I think, I, yeah, I was like, there's a chance that someone might actually know this food-wise, um, but it's the process for the preparation of corn or maize um, that makes corn tortillas, like, possible and delicious. Um, so soaked in, like, a lime water, lie situation and then it removes certain toxins um but it's relevant because of the corn tortilla thing because it's what makes those like amazing when they make those amazing maize fresh corn tortillas that i can eat so it's the flux capacitor of corn tortillas yeah exactly so nixtamalized maize has several benefits over unprocessed grain because it's more easily ground and it increases the nutrition and flavors better and all these things and it basically creates like what helps the tortilla stick together at the end of the day hmm. i'm gonna like walk into a taco place after this call be like one of your finest nixtamalized tortillas sir <laughs> yeah and if like they if what? they know what you're talking about, that's how you know that it's going to be a, an amazing taco. <laughs> I do have like an unofficial list of good corn tortillas in town that I kind of go to. So, that's, so that probably has something to do with it. I'm sure it does. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's like, it's, it's, yeah, it's, and it makes me hungry for tacos. So. I wish we spent more time talking about it. Katie was a taco last night. That's because both of your families and your costume ideas are just stellar. I've never been more pleased in my life. <laughs> you, I, I think I know the answer to this, but do you feel that Halloween costumes need to be spooky? Or is just dressing up okay? Cosplay? No, I think it's just a way of expressing yourself in an amazing way. Yeah. I can, someone, I, can. I, I ran to someone that was grumpy about that yesterday. Like, what's with these non-spooky costumes? Just being a grumpy asshole about Halloween. Yeah. yeah. No, it, okay, so, so I actually did, I have a blog post uh, that's eight years, uh, eight, no, six years old. Uh, that, where I actually did research on the history of, of Halloween, uh, which has its roots in the Celtic holiday of Samhain, uh, which and the, the whole dressing up thing. So the, the idea is that there are these there are these pivotal parts of the days in the calendar uh, that are on that are basically bookend the year, where the gateway between our natural world and the spirit world is opened. So Samhain is one of them and Beltane is the other one. Um, Beltane is on May 1st, Samhain is on October 31st. Um, so bookending the year. And on these days, uh, spirits and fairies can come through into our world and interact with us in, in both good and bad ways. So what you, the reason why you dress up is either because you want to scare off the bad spirits or you want to disguise yourself so that you're not attacked by by bad spirits or you just want to confuse them like they they used to have um you know instead of dressing up you might wear your clothes inside out to confuse the spirits um and you want to put things out for them so that they are happy or placated and you also want to invite the good spirits in so you might leave uh, an empty space uh, at the dinner table for for uh, you know late uncle bob um so that he can be part of of your dinner I, your feast i hope they're into like almost rotten pumpkins <laughs> We've had a hot October, so the pumpkins we carved are like borderline. Not looking. They might scary. be long today. They used to carve turnips and other sort of root vegetables uh, instead of pumpkins. So there would be turnip lanterns. I mean, I'm down with that. That sounds awesome. That's we years ago we got like the little tiny pumpkins. Like wondering, like, can you carve these tiny ones? We've tried. Yes, but the wall is like it's like yep. sixty percent pumpkin wall. <laughs> so do it at your own yeah. peril. It's almost yeah. like, it's like avocado hand, right? That's what you, the risk you're running. That's true. That's not the ER visit that you want to have to explain to someone. I'm yeah, sorry. it's, it's um, and they also, they also wilt a lot faster. They like wilt within a day as opposed to being okay for a couple of days. Most pumpkins you get at Patches are not, um, you can't plant the seeds. They won't germinate or whatever seeds do. Um, but we, one of the pumpkins we were carving, we pulled out and there were like four seeds that were already growing. So I'm pretty excited about planting those and killing them promptly like I do with all other things I plant. Um, yeah. We, we got accidental pumpkins one year um, because we do, we put like, we do dig compost uh, pits in the backyard. Um, and so we, you know, all the pumpkin guts go into the compost pit. Uh, and then, yeah, one year, uh, you know, during 
planting time, we had something growing out of, I mean, we usually have something growing out of the compost pit, to, to be honest, um, just because it happens on, on its own. Um, and one year that thing growing out of the compost pit was a pumpkin vine, a big old pumpkin vine, the one that take over the entire garden. And so we had pumpkins that year because, because it was growing out of the compost. That's awesome. Nice. I love, I so, also love the phrase accidental pumpkins. Yes. <laughs> so they like, I guess my biggest concern is what kind of weather they like. Like if I plant it now, is it problematic or should I just keep the seeds and I don't know. I don't know. I need to do some research on this. I mean, stuff. if it's growing now, you might as well plant it now. Yeah. Um, it might not, it, it, it might last the year. I mean, usually you plant that stuff in the spring. So, and then it, and then you harvest it in, I mean, now the reason why we have yeah. pumpkins is because this is the time where you would harvest your pumpkin. I do something with them. And, and the other squash too. Like when the, when the weather pumpkin squashes in general are, are, are something that can withstand cold weather more so than other types of vegetables and plants. So the reason why we have pumpkins and, and squashes around Thanksgiving and, and Halloween is because that is when you'd be harvesting them. Um, so, I guess my question is, can I grow pumpkins on like the first level of hell? You know, <laughs> like it's it, the it, first level of hell might be a little bit too hot for pumpkins to to really be. That's my that's my fear. Yeah. Happy, but <laughs> too lush. <laughs> you could you could try, um, and I mean they they seem to be pretty resilient regardless. So I don't know. They do, yeah. I think you should. Grow, grow them indoors. I'm sure you're... Oh, no, don't do that. <laughs> sure, that'll work out fine. <laughs> don't, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> Six months, your entire house will be taken over by your pumpkin plant. It's your normal pumpkin patch. <laughs> well, um, th this shot, this angle right here will just be covered in pumpkin like vines. Vines. <laughs> I'll be like knocking pumpkins off the back of the couch. <laughs> No, it's it. That's legit. Yeah. No, don't do that. I picture them rolling by like tumblebeads, and like <laughs> very animated, <laughs> like Muppety Children pumpkins. All of a sudden. <laughs> um, with less than a minute left, do we have any questions? <laughs> do we want to talk about pumpkins? Um, or? <laughs> or I can ask a question. You, you can. Uh, let's hear your question, Gary. I didn't really have one prepared. Oh, just, <laughs> oh now you do. But but now I can ask one. Um, Less than a minute, Gary. Well, I'm trying to think of something that's not too political. No, no pressure. I don't want to alienate any of our listeners. Um, <laughs> our listener? She's on the show. Just ask me the question. Our one listener is on the show. You can't alienate her. She's here. <laughs> do you, okay, so do you think that the polarized politics in America have a, have a uh, and our current situation have a, a um, negative effect on... Um, like international support of international issues. We're so internally focused right now on the mayhem that's happening within our borders in this, in this uh, hemisphere, right? Does that, does that negate some of our outward looking support of other countries that are in like way worse shape? Yeah, yes, yes. absolutely. And, and to what extent like- the Short answer, yes. <laughs> yeah. One minute answer. So I shouldn't ask you yes or no question, but like, what do we do about that? I mean, I guess it was a leading question, but what do we do? Uh, kick out the guy on top. First step, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I and mean, vote. <laughs> and vote, yes, and vote to kick the guy out. <laughs> vote in general. I, I mean, I, guess I have a longer you... answer, but I know I'm going to get cut right. off. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> so it's a good question. Um, well, we'll have to see you in Slack. If you're interested, you can join us, join us in Slack and chat about this a lot. Um, and you or can you can send us questions online large. because we need questions. Please call, uh, send us a question through, uh, call us. Yes, call us. Yeah, don't let like Gary ask questions. Binaryjazz.us <laughs> is a contact form on the bottom page. You can Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.